Welcome back to Your Legislation. And we're joined here with Mr. Randy Fry, who is the legislator for District 67. Mm -hmm. So we are very glad you're able to come in. Thanks so much for having me. This is a, it's a great way for us to keep the uh, general population aware of what's going on in General Assembly. I think so. It, it'll help them understand the process. It will. So this is great. Now, on Tuesday, you've got some bills that are coming up for their third reading. What right. are those? Well, every third reading is where a bill is heard on its merits. Uh, bills are always heard in committee first. Then on second reading is where they're on the House floor, but they're eligible for amendment. And then on third reading, it's just the merits of the bill. So there'll be uh, three different bills up on uh, Tuesday. Of course, we're off Monday for uh, Martin Luther King Day. Right. So we'll be up on Tuesday on third reading. Uh, the first one is a bill that deals with the Indiana Department of Veterans Affairs. And uh, that's a, an annual bill. Many of the bills that we have are annual bills that bring us up to date in the code. Right. And sometimes it's because of technology changes and sometimes it's other things. Um, and this particular bill uh, corrects uh, a mistake really in the code. It talks about a Medal of Honor winner. Well, we know you don't win the Medal of Honor, you're awarded the Medal of Honor, Correct. you're a recipient. And so that's one of the things that it changes. Another thing that it changed in there is there's currently in Indiana's code, if you want to be the director of the Indiana Department of Veterans Affairs or an employee of, it, of the department, you must have lived in Indiana for the past consecutive five years. Right. It sounds good, and, and it's of course we want people from Indiana to be in our Department of Veterans Affairs, but what it does is it takes someone who might have gone to Washington for a couple of years to work, uh -huh. and then they can't come back for five years. Uh, we had one example where a gentleman wanted to come to work for the Indiana Department of Veterans Affairs who had been on General Colin Powell's staff, but he hadn't been back in Indiana for five consecutive years, so he wasn't eligible. Oh, you lost so that knowledge. We lost that opportunity. Uh, and so we want them to uh, uh, certainly be Hoosier resident, but we're going to change that so it doesn't have to be five consecutive years. Uh, and I think that'll be uh, very helpful for, to that agency going forward. Oh, I think so too. That is wonderful. Mm -hmm. So we'll we look forward to that one. And that bill passed committee unanimously, and, and it was not right. amended on second reading. So I don't anticipate any trouble. Well, that's great. Now there's a, a really cool one coming up that deals with school resource officers. Right. That yeah. a lot of people don't know how that works mm -hmm. and the downfalls of it that you right. all are trying to fix. Well, school resource officer, as your listeners and viewers know, are, um, are folks that are protect our kids in school. Uh, in a lot of cases, they are retired police officers, not in every case, but in a lot of cases, they're retired police officers who now are working for the school corporation. Right. And their arrest powers come through the county, usually, or the city, but they're classified as a special deputy, not a reserve deputy. And therefore, they're not eligible for the line of duty death benefit for a police officer in Indiana. And so this bill, authored by Representative Peggy Mayfield, changes that and it makes a school resource officer eligible for line of duty death benefit in the event that tragedy happens and they're killed in the line of duty as a school resource officer for the state of Indiana's death benefit that's provided for public safety officers. Um, and, you know, everyone thinks immediately of a school shooting. Right. Well, this could happen in a parking lot. A right. lot of school resource officers direct traffic. So it could be uh, any place. Uh, and we want to make sure that they're treated the same as every other police officer. They are putting a lot of time into that. And, and it is a risky thing to do. So. It, is, it is. And uh, we want them to know that how much we appreciate yes. the work that they do. And that will make them feel better. Well, sure. That will make them... Yeah. It's the right thing to it do. It is. It's definitely the right thing to do. So now later on this week, we mm -hmm. have a couple more things that will be coming through. And um, mm -hmm. what are those? We have another bill on third reading on Tuesday, and it deals with a police line. I'm sure your uh, your the folks watching have seen television or maybe live uh, where uh, a crime scene is uh, is measured off with yellow tape. Right. It's called scene tape or crime scene tape. And uh, the current law that we have uh, refers to it as a crime scene or law enforcement. And what we want to do is change it to a public safety line. Uh, in my career as a professional firefighter, we responded occasionally on a fire that turned out to be a murder where someone tried to cover the crime scene right. with a fire. And you get in there and you realize this is not what we thought it was. 
and you need to secure that scene until law enforcement can take it. And so this gives the same protection to public safety, whether they be police, fire, or emergency medicine, uh, when it comes to securing a scene, uh, and it's always because it's a crime scene, uh, whether it could be a, a emergency medical run where someone was assaulted, or it could be several different, uh, a fatality, and auto right. accident, uh, where you just can't have uh, folks tramping, tramping through the scene. Well, that, that is beneficial because if it's a fire department found it and no one's there to meet uh, an officer or another firefighter from mm -hmm. walking through the tape line, That's true. then they're going to go on through it not realizing they're going to mess right. up evidence. That's right. And, and uh, so. the big thing is preserve the evidence. So you yes. just can't have someone walking through, even they're innocently just looking or curious, yes. uh, it just destroys the evidence. Right. And, th and that can be the public and it, it can also be another firefighter that's maybe come on the run in his own right. car. Right. So mm -hmm. it keeps, it, everybody knows when mm -hmm. they see that tape. Sure. So that's, mm -hmm. that'd be great. Yeah. That might, might things processed a little faster. Well, or, or at least preserve the important evidence. Yes, mm -hmm. that is wonderful. Yeah. Well, now, do we have anything else we want to make sure people know before we go right. today? Well, we do. Uh, the jail overcrowding bill that I've authored is House Bill 1346. Um, that bill is uh, becoming much, much better. Uh, someone might say, well, how is that possible? Well, when we file a bill, we, we file it based on what we think is the best at the time. But then you get a lot of other folks involved, other legislators, you get other agencies. Right. Um, other ideas. Uh, well, absolutely. Right. And so. we begin to incorporate them into the bill. And so that bill will be heard in the Courts and Criminal Code Committee on uh, Wednesday morning. And uh, what that bill does is uh, several act, several things actually. I uh, authored a bill last year that created a jail overcrowding task force. And this particular legislation would roll that task force into another agency, uh, the acronym is JRAC. Uh, JRAC's responsibility is to oversee uh, recidivism in our uh, criminal justice system. And so we want the study to continue to find out um, you know, why our jails are overcrowded. We know that the information that we got this year wasn't completely uh, uh, all-inclusive. Right. We still need more uh, study. Uh, another factor in the, in the legislation is that there's a pilot program in there to provide a public defender uh, at your initial hearing should you not be able to afford an attorney. Right. Uh, we found uh, through the study that if you have an attorney at your initial bond hearing, your uh, chances of having a, a bond uh, and going home are much lower, uh, are much better going home than it would be if you came by without an attorney. Right. So we want to see if that works. That's a pilot program. Um, we're putting a provision in there to help with Medicaid uh, currently. And if you are on Medicaid and you're incarcerated, you're, uh, while you're in jail, you lose your Medicaid. But when you get out, you have to reapply to Medicaid could take a year or longer if you even get uh, reapproved. And so my bill will help uh, that and help it get reinstated right. uh, if you, when you come out. You know, a lot of folks are on uh, uh, med mental health uh, treatment and have medication. They need the Medicaid to pay for it. Or it could be that they're in drug rehab. And in that case, Medicaid pays for that. So we have to be able to solve that problem as well. Um, the jello, the uh, the jail overcrowding bill this year uh, is a complement to last year's bill, and we'll have them year after year now as we begin to try to solve the real core problem of what's causing our jails to be overcrowded. Well, I think some of the things you're doing, like you're talking about the uh, attorney being there mm -hmm. when you first mm -hmm. heard, mm -hmm. that keeps a person from being in jail for three to, well, three months approximately <clears throat> or so, and well, then getting maybe community service, and he could have been out paying right. his house payment and his car payment and all that. So. Well, that's that's true, Debbie. I, I think it's important, though, that we make sure that the listeners know that the judge has got the final say. Yes. And anyone who needs to be incarcerated uh, because they're a threat to themselves or others has to stay in jail. Yes. It's the person who would be able to go home if they had bail money versus the person who did get to go home because they had bail money. Right. That's the one we're looking at. Uh, but uh, it's always going to be the final say will be with the judge. Right. But that will help with the jail overcrowding. Mm -hmm. So that's, I think the pilot program is a good one. Well, let's hope so, and uh, we'll see how it goes. As you know, a bill is not a law. A bill is an idea that uh, may become law, 
but it's got a long way to go. It has to clear committee on Wednesday, then it'll be on second reading, probably uh, on Monday the following right. week, and maybe if it gets through there, it'll make it to sec uh, third reading the following Tuesday. So we're a ways away. We're a couple of weeks away from that bill getting on the House floor and seeing where it goes. Oh, wow. That'll be interesting to see all that. I mean, yeah. There's also a way that people, if you want to stay involved with the legislators' committee meetings, mm -hmm. you can actually go online mm -hmm. and you can see those. Yep. And those are that at iga.in.gov. IGA you can watch the Indiana General Assembly. Go to their web page. If you Google yes. Indiana General Assembly, uh, it'll bring you to that web page. And then you can click on whatever you want to watch, whether it's yes. a committee hearing or the House or the Senate. Now, the House and the Senate, and I believe Ways and Means are archived, and so if you can't watch while you're at work or you've got, just don't have time, you can go back and watch it later. Right. Now, all committees aren't archived, but the House and the Senate, I believe Ways and Means is. Well, that that's very beneficial because if they want to stay up on things and how it's working mm -hmm. and going, it, it helps them stay involved. Right. So. You, can go, you can even go back and compare last year's testimony on a similar bill to this year's testimony. So it's always there. It's very transparent. It's intended to be that way. Right. That's great. That That's helpful. Yeah. So do we have anything else? Well, it's going to be a busy week. Yes. Uh, it'll be a short week because three days. So we're going right. to probably try to do four days worth of work in three days. But, but we'll get it done. You all will be working late a couple of nights, yeah, I'm will. sure. sure we will. <laughs> I'm sure we will. Well, that's okay. It's not, you're only in session. I don't think a lot of people realize mm -hmm. session is not a really long period of time. It is not. This year's short uh, short session is called a budget session. is known as a long session. It goes through April. This one must be by the Indiana Constitution completed by the 14th day of March. Right. So not very long. And the first half of session uh, is about January. So we're already well over halfway through the month of January. And uh, so we don't have a whole lot of time left for bills to get out of committee and get to where they need to go. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, this is wonderful. Thanks for coming in and, and helping to clear always. up the muddy water. That yeah. is. So, I enjoy it. Well, this, we enjoy you being here. So thank you, thank you very much. My pleasure. And we appreciate our sponsors. We're glad they help us get these things and put them on. And as always, we thank you for watching. <laughs>